Hey, how's it going guys? Um, it's Alex here and I just want to take a quick second out of the video to say thank you to all the people out there who have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Uh, without you guys watching the video, I probably wouldn't be making them and wasting my time. So, um, thanks for following my videos, watching them, subscribing to my channel, and uh, for all your support. Um, today we're going to be talking about devs for Android's newest ROM, which is um, uh, Kana, or Kana version 1, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but uh, it's K-A-N-A version 1, and it's basically a ROM that's built to look uh, like stock Android. So um, they're calling it the AOSP clone. Uh, AOSP stands for Android Open Source Project, and it just uh, refers to a stock Android experience. So uh, uh, the ROM is supposed to be very light, uh, all the bloatware is removed and stuff like that. So for those of you who like the, the pure Android look, this ROM is probably for you. So let's get right into it and uh, review this. Alright guys, so we always start off with these uh, video reviews with um, uh, compliments, uh, comments uh, regarding speed. So uh, all I can really say now about this whole speed category guys it, is um, these ROMs have basically gotten to a point where I believe the speed and the speed performance is the same throughout all of them. I mean like when it comes to opening and closing apps, all, these, all of these uh, Android 2.2 ROMs basically perform pretty much the same I mean scrolling and everything just it's reached a point where you can't really notice a difference um, in performance when when you talk about speed as you can see like all apps open and close really quickly coming home open scrolling home uh, menus settings going through that transitions and um, animations everything's just it's very typical now so uh, and I and I mean it's not a bad thing it's really good because we've reached a point where we can consistently get this per very fast performance out of these ROMs so uh, uh, really no complaints here for me um, uh, sleeping the phone and waking it up still very fast experience do it again so we're good there and as for quadrant scores like I said all these ROMs are they're pretty similar in that they all share the whole voodoo lag fix thing so we're gonna get quadrant scores that average around 1500 uh, usually plus or minus 50 points so it's all very typical scores and it's you know it portrays in the actual performance uh, as we can see really no no significant differences between all these ROMs so uh, the speed category here for this um, Kana version 1 ROM is going to get a 9. Um, let's move on and talk about features and functionality. And this this category is where uh, the ROM takes a big hit. Um, like all the previous ROMs that I've reviewed, this is an Android 2.2 based ROM. Uh, the only difference is that it's built off of the latest leak uh, from Samsung as of the date, today's date, which is January 21st, 2011. Uh, the latest leak as of right now is um, KA6. So... Uh, one important thing to note is that there are no third-party launchers pre-installed, so um, right out of a fresh flash, this is how the ROM looks. Um, the home screens look like that, and you get no uh, additional launchers. It just comes with this stock Android launcher. So You get seven home screens to start off with, pretty much uh, just like the stock experience. And uh, one thing that's different, though, is that uh, the toggles are still there. The Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, silent, and uh, orientation lock toggles are still there. And I think that's just for convenience sake because um, those that feature is very convenient. And even if for the sake of this ROM being as close to stock Android as possible, I think uh, the developers decided that that feature is a necessity, so they left it there. Uh, the battery icon is just a stock Android battery icon, so you're not going to get a battery percentage indicator inside. Um, the only keypad, the only keyboard that you're going to get in this ROM is the Samsung keypad. That's it. Sorry if you can't see that, guys. Yeah, but you only get the Samsung keypad, which is kind of weird. I mean, like, considering it's supposed to be a stock Android experience, like, where's the stock Android keyboard? Um, I, I don't know if they thought about that or not when they were making the ROM, but... Um, it's. I think that keyboard is definitely better than the Samsung keypad. So, I mean, this thing doesn't even have a feature to like turn off, like this this the sound. Like, I mean, like you 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 can do it through the settings, but like through, uh, like through the phone settings, you probably can, but you can't do it within the settings of the keyboard itself. So it's just like just a very poor keyboard in my experience. 
um, or in my opinion so the uh, messaging app while we're there is just the stock messaging app so you're not gonna get the bubble thread uh, the bubble threading of um, TouchWiz, the TouchWiz messaging app. So that's that. Uh, let's see. The alarm clock application is the TouchWiz one, which is great because, like I mentioned in the previous review uh, of Auxera 2.2.7, um, the stock Android clock application doesn't have uh, a stopwatch or a timer feature. So luckily, they left the TouchWiz clock uh, and alarm application there. Uh, the calculator is the stock Android calculator, and the difference here is that you don't see like those orange buttons that you do in the TouchWiz uh, calculator. And on top of that, the more important thing is that the stock Android calculator is lacking uh, very important, or not very important, I should say, but uh, it's lacking a lot of features and buttons that the TouchWiz cal uh, calculator actually had. Uh, I mean, like seriously, the TouchWiz calculator was really good. It had a lot of functions that like that could compete with just a, a typical scientific calculator whereas this one has a lot missing so um, you know that may be important to some people because they use their phones for calculators in school and stuff um, calendar application stock Android uh, I'm not really a big fan of the stock Android ca uh, calendar just because the the navigation aspect of it it's just missing really important like really simple features like for instance the ability to just add or create an event like right after you hit the menu button in TouchWiz there's like a create event or add event button right there here you gotta hit the menu and then hit more and then hit new event up there and it's just so like I don't know it's uh, inconvenient in my eyes and it just looks very plain this entire ROM is based off of you know the stock Android look so a lot of white and plain plain colors so a lot of people like that a lot of people don't I'm not so much a big fan of that so um, the camera application does support front-facing camera as you can see by the button up here that allows you to change between the back camera and the front camera so if you have a, a front-facing camera modded into your vibrant you'll still be able to use it uh, luckily the contacts application is the TouchWiz one so you'll be able to slide to the right to directly make a call or slide to the left to directly uh, message someone so good for that let's see what else can we talk about um, they left the memo application, the the Samsung memo application, which is nice. I guess I've been complaining about that a lot, so uh, I figured, or I'd like to think that they left it there because I said so. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, don't get mad because of that, Master, or anyone who's watching this review. Uh, the music application is a stock Android uh, music player, which is, uh, a, you know, it's really... Compared to the TouchWiz music player, there's a lot of little things that are missing that are really convenient in the TouchWiz music player. For instance, when you play a song here, as you can see, there's no volume. Uh, there's no, uh, I can't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. There's no volume uh, slider here so that you can uh, simply change the volume within the, 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 the UI as opposed to using the volume rocker, the physical volume rocker. So just little things like that you know makes uh, the stock Android experience in my opinion uh, less less um, user friendly than the TouchWiz experience so what else can we talk about um, that is basically it for the whole application stuff uh, we don't have any um, additional lock screens okay guys uh, so you don't get the Galaxy the other Galaxy S lock screens you just basically get the stock Android one so well I mean uh, most people I think uh, prefer this anyway so no big deal there and uh, the built into the ROM is um, KA6 version of Voodoo so uh, you have Voodoo here so you know you get the speed increase that comes with uh, the lag fix so and that's that and like I said guys a lot of people out there complain about uh, phones that that don't run the stock Android uh, a pure Android um, because they think that uh, custom UIs on top like TouchWiz and Sense and Modal Blur and stuff like that cut uh, take away from the speed. Uh, but as you can see from all these ROMs that have uh, additional features added to them, they're all running extremely fast, all of which are getting nines in speed, so I don't see the big deal. Uh, if anything, UIs like TouchWiz add many little functionalities that stock Android leaves out, which is a good thing. So in my opinion, uh, I'm not such a big fan of stock Android, so that's that. Features and functionality is going to get an 8 for this ROM, just because you know it is lacking a lot of those uh, little features that make using a phone so convenient. 
that custom UIs uh, add to the experience. Uh, next, we're going to talk about aesthetics. Uh, like I said, stock Android looks very plain. A lot of white and very light, bright colors. Uh, looks very plain, in my opinion. Um, we got. It looks a lot like the G2. If you've seen a stock G2, uh, that's what it basically looks like. Stock battery icon with no uh, no incremental segments inside, anything like that. Uh, the font is a stock Android font. The here's the boot down. Uh, I mean uh, the boot up, the boot and shutdown animations, so you guys can see. Very uh, stock. Check this out. Power off. Yeah, it's the T-Mobile, the T-Mobile shutdown animation. So uh, yep, they're they're really staying true to to the stock experience. So uh, yeah, uh, well, as soon as we boot up, I'll I'll uh, uh, plug the video back in so you guys can see the boot up. I'm gonna cut it right now. As we wait for the phone to reboot, so you can see the the boot animation, which is just the uh, Nexus S, or I mean the Nexus Rainbow. Um, I got to admit though, um, it takes it it's a it takes a lot quicker. It takes less time for the phone to actually boot off. Uh, maybe it, it's because of the uh, the simple shutdown animation, but uh, it actually shuts off completely uh, a lot quicker than previous ROMs that I've um, reviewed. So that's a good thing. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about um, animations. You're not going to get any fancy animations or transitions like flipping, fading, uh, stuff like that that you would normally see in like uh, Axura ROMs. Uh, because like I see, it is trying to stay true to the stock Android experience, so you're not going to get any of that. And um, the the ROM does come with a nice collection of uh, static wallpapers, as I'll show you here. Uh, a lot of very nice and clean cut with very bright colors to show off the the vibrant screen so that's nice but as for the live wallpapers you're not going to get the uh, Nexus S live wallpapers so you're just getting basically stock Android 2.2 live wallpapers there and uh, that wraps up aesthetics and um, we're gonna give it an, uh, an 8 uh, it doesn't look that fancy to me uh, doesn't look you know just very plain so nothing special it gets a very simple 8 and last but not least uh, network and battery guys to wrap this up, the uh, KA6 base seems to perform just just as good as the KA5, like a, uh, the latest version of Xero is running. Um, so the same performance as KA5, but a lot better than JL5. Uh, we're getting a lot better data throughput and uh, signal reception. Uh, I've actually I'm actually been getting uh, really good download speeds uh, use, uh, using speed tests. So. Um, that's that, and the battery life is, you know, typical. You can get throughout your entire day with very moderate, or you know, very typical use: surfing the web, checking email, um, uh, texting, making phone calls. You can get the whole day without the phone dying on you, and then you just charge it overnight. But um, I think I actually notice a little bit better battery life, um, maybe due to the ROM being so light in the sense that uh, you know there's no custom UI and no widgets and stuff like that to uh, drain the battery in the background. So. Uh, that's that. So with that network and battery, this category gets a 9.25. Um, same thing as a Xura 2.2.7. Uh, um, and that wraps it up, guys. Averaging out the the ROM score is uh, 8.56. Then that may seem low, but that's just because you know it's it's a stock experience. Um, you don't experience uh, you don't expect it to get such a high score that you would after develop like like as ROMs where developers add so many additional features so not to say that it's a bad ROM at all uh, it does what it does it looks it looks very clean a lot of people like the stock Android look so this will fare very well in their opinions uh, nice ROM if you're into that uh, pure Android look if not uh, stick with Xero or Nero or any of the other ROMs out there alright peace out guys until the next video